all okay? Hello, or, hello, hello, yeah, hello, and welcome to The Zone. Um, this is a program, a weekly interview or demonstration session that we are doing every single Thursday live on YouTube and normally also on Facebook. But I just saw today Facebook dropped us even before we started. My name is Claudio. I'm a presentation coach and every week I invite some extra special people. And today it's my absolute pleasure to welcome Nathan Gold, my trusted friend and colleague from San Francisco, California. Nathan, good morning. And good morning to you as well. It's been a good morning so far. <laughs> all right, all right. So we, we just struggled with a couple of tech issues here. And oops, this should not have happened so quickly. Uh, nevertheless, <laughs> let's, let's immediately dive in. The tech issues continue. Last time you were here, Nathan, I've shown this picture yes. here of you. Uh, practicing a very, very important speech. And remind us again what this speech was about. I went to a camp during my summers at, in my early teens that was named after a very famous person whose name was Nathan. And it, originally the camp was called the Masonic Youth Camp and we, it was renamed to the Nathan Turk Camp. Mm -hmm. And obviously my name was Nathan, so they picked me out of all the campers to do a talk to, to you know, say thanks because he was dead. He had died, right? And so okay. they <laughs> there was about detail. a thousand people that had all, <laughs> yeah, well, a thousand people came to the camp for the ceremony and wow. I had to do a 10 minute camper talk and I did read it, but it was the scariest day of my life back then. <laughs> I can imagine, I can imagine and you look like you were at such a young age and as our audience knows, we are fond of playing trivia games. And last time we had this conversation, you told us how old you were. So maybe yeah. some of our viewers today, I they remember. Let's see quickly who actually joined us here today. It's a small group that we have. We have Said from Germany, the facilitator, Andreas from Singapore, Real, real pleasure seeing you here again, Andreas. And of course, Yash from India. Always great seeing your name here, Yash. So um, let's dive into our trivia immediately here. And that is, how old was Nathan when he delivered his first presentation to an audience of 1,000 people? And you just saw the image before. Um, I can very, very yeah. quickly bring it up again. So this is Nathan. And the question is, how old was Nathan when he gave that presentation? Was he 12 years old? Was he 13 years old? Was he 14 years old or the 15? So what is your best guess? Our audience out there, is it A? B, C, or D? What is your best guess? And we have answers trickling in here. Andrea says D, 15. We have the facilitator with C, 14. And B, Yash says B, 13 years. And Yash, of course, is, uh, has, has missed almost no zone episode. So I'm almost convinced Yash also has a very, very good memory. Nathan, what was your age at that time? Yash's answer. Uh, <laughs> Yash was correct. Good work. You were 13. 13 years old. I mean, that is a very, very That's young right. age to face such an audience. I mean, 1,000 people, uh, 
what kind of butterflies were flying around in your stomach on that day? Well, I was, um, I almost remember the day was almost surreal. I was floating. It didn't even feel real leading up to the time when I walked up on the stage to give that presentation. But I was comfortable because I had worked with a, a counselor who was a teacher. Actually, all of the counselors were teachers. And he helped me write the talk. He helped me practice the talk. He helped me walk the talk. We'd walk through the, the, uh, the forest and he, he would ask me to do the talk. So when I actually got up there on stage, I felt ultra prepared with the presentation material, which I believe is half the battle to handling nerves now that I'm in my 60s. But the other half of the nerves were 2,000 eyeballs looking at me and they're all waiting. It's quiet. And now I get to speak. And I don't, I don't remember actually speaking. I got off that stage and it was like I was sweating because it was warm out, but I was having fun and the people actually laughed at one or two points. I didn't expect them to be laughing, but it was a, a, a time I think I'll never forget that moment in my time. And I, I, I do believe that was part of the moment where I decided I like this presentation stuff imagine i can imagine i mean it is a very special yeah. high that we experience and i believe the larger oh. the crowd the higher the high right so yeah i'm glad that you had this opportunity at such a young age because that made you who you are yeah. today and put you into a position to help so many people all around the world today as a coach helping them prepare for their high stakes presentations. Now, you mentioned before, you're now in your 60s. So that's been a couple of moons ago, right? There wasn't a lot of technology at that time. What did you do, no. if anything? No. Was the thought about engaging your audience even on your mind at that time or not? Most definitely, because I remember Howie Claflin, the, co the counselor that coached me, after the, the, the talk was written, it's almost like what we do today for people. Once the, the talking points were written out, all I had to do is practice it and practice it and practice it out loud so that I could use my voice to engage the audience. And Howie was the one that taught me about all of the different things, what I hear people call vocal variety today. He taught me how to use my voice when communicating to such a large audience. And it worked. It worked. And it was unusual for me because I was a fairly soft-spoken boy at that age. And I was quiet. And I, I never really used my voice except to just talk to other kids. So when I was asked to go up in front of a microphone, well, you know, short of something you might do in elementary school, I never really stood in front of a microphone for 10 minutes to talk when I was the only one talking. That monologue was the first time I had ever been under those kind of stressful situations or high stakes situations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's interesting that when I mention engagement, audience engagement, right? You're going to the classic methods like vocal variety, rhetoric techniques like, yeah. like pausing, speeding up to convey excitement and enthusiasm, slowing down and so on. But today we are living in quite a different world, right? So one of the things that I'm using mm. to engage an audience are these trivia questions that we are asking in every single episode. And I believe it just helps to give the audience a small little role to play. So they are not only passively listening, but actively participating, even if it's a live stream like this one. And so today you mm. are going to present and you're going to show us a tool that you've been using for quite a while, right? And that gets me 
to our second trivia question. But this time, let's play it slightly, slightly differently, right? So normally, I'm asking our audience to put the answer into the comments. However, there is a QR code right up here. And if you need to have it a little bit bigger, here it's bigger, the QR code that gets you to our page on Slido. And we are going to collect your answers today in Slido. So I'm still bringing up the trivia like this on our side. And the next question in our trivia is, what year did Slido begin their mission? Was it A, 2002, B, 2005, C, 2012, or D, 2015? So again, no need to put the answer into the comments, but scan the code that you see up here and then provide your answer on the interface. And if you do not uh, have a phone handy to scan the code, you can also go to slido.com slash the zone in your browser in a different tab and participate that way. So Nathan, do we already have some answers? Uh, let me have a look, see. We have, we do, we have two. We have okay. two answers in the bucket already, and that's good enough for today because it'll illustrate to the people watching as well right. as anybody watching afterwards what actually happened. All right. So let me bring up Ready? the user interface here, the Slido user interface. And that is the question that we asked. Yep. What year did Slido begin the um, their mission? And we have 50% saying 2005 and 50% 2015. Now, there is a story behind this, right? There is something that happened when you were traveling in Europe at one time a couple of years ago. And, yep. okay, yes. so tell us what happened when you were traveling in Europe. Well, the answer is uh, September of 2012, 20, 20, uh, and nobody got that on the, on the uh, results, but that's okay. But the answer was actually 2012. So in September of 2012, I'm in Bratislava at, the, at a university to present how to captivate your audience, you know, my normal stuff. There were 600 people in the audience and standing room all around the edges and in the back. It was a very surreal, unusual thing for me. And it was pretty early on in my coaching. Anyway, long story short, I do this whole presentation. And at the end, people are piling out. And these three guys walk up to me in the front and said, Nathan, that was fun. How would you like to make your presentations more fun, more engaging, more interactive? I said, is that a trick question? And they said, no, of course not. And then they showed me Slido. And I was a convert at that moment. I literally fell in love with the idea that I, as a presenter, could throw a QR code up on the screen. Yes, even back in 2012, people were using QR codes. Have the audience pick up their smartphones, their tablets, or even use their computer if they wanted to and scan the QR code up on the screen and answer a poll like you did just a moment ago. It's that simple. There are no apps to download. It's quick and easy. It runs on Android, iOS, all the different tablets. It runs in a browser. So from a, from a, a, a no friction standpoint, when I need to get my audience in a live situation involved, I'll bring up Slido. In the virtual world, I use it all of the time because as you can imagine, most people are sitting by themselves in their own offices or behind their computers at home. And by using something like Slido, you can immediately get people to start moving their arms a little bit. Hey, pick up your smartphone, 
scan in this QR code. Let's have some fun because I, we've only just scratched the surface on what you can do with Slido. But besides the fact that it makes it really easy and quick to interact with my audience, one of the things I love about it more than anything is I'm not tied to a particular video platform. So I don't have to know how to use Zoom's Slido. I don't have to know how to use anybody else's polling, surveying. I can set all of that up with Slido beforehand. And then when I show up, as we've been doing here today, I'm just using Slido natively. That's it, just Slido in the browser and we're bringing up the results. That's the simplest way to do it. But you can also integrate your Slido interactions directly into your Google Slides, your PowerPoint Slides, and uh, I don't think, no, I don't think that uh, um, nope. the Mac is integrated. Nope. But you put, you put it in, in your slides, and then when you click, it's not okay. Then when you click, the survey pops up. You don't have to do anything. You don't need somebody to manage the interactions you're having with your audience. So as a, as a one-man band, I click, the slide pops up. Uh, please answer the question that you see up there right now. And people are picking up their phones and they're doing it. And they're moving and interacting. And I normally would never use it in person with less than about 20, 25 people. Because it's yeah. a little, you can just ask people to raise their hands or speak out. But the minute you get, I think 25 to me is the sweet sweet spot for in-person. Uh, and then online, it doesn't matter, 25, 50, 1,000. I've, I've had as many as 500 people responding to a Slido. And when you see the numbers spinning up, how many people are responding, it, it, it shows you who's interacting and how you're interacting with your audience. Wow. Very cool. And what I really, really like is that you can use this for real, you know, meet space meetings as well as online, right? Mm -hmm. This is not just oh. an online tool, but you can use it anywhere. Oh. And, you know, some of my background is, is in training and teaching and uh, this would be perfect in any classroom, for example, to just get some responses. And the responses are anonymous, right? Mm -hmm. So it gives us a glimpse into it, like when we, oops, the result is already gone here. All right. So, um, oh, I can put it back on. I can put you the, can put the it results back on. back on. Okay. Go ahead. Not sure yep. whether this is the uh, one we want. Oops, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think that is the one you want. Uh, nope. Oh, there, here. Sorry. All right. All right. Got it. There it is. It's there. So in this case here, the beautiful thing is you get this and visual there's... representation, right? And <laughs> all right. All right. So so what is this, Nathan? So the congratulations. Yes, I, I didn't. I don't think I've ever pr I've ever pressed on this button, but I know what it is. <laughs> when you're running quizzes, uh -huh. you can gamify it or funify it and create a leaderboard. Okay. So we only had two people respond, right? So oh, after uh, okay. three or four or five or ten quizzes, you can yeah. have people start competing for different ranks in their scores. Okay. That's what and, this is. And so this I've never isn't... used it. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, this this isn't only um, ranking by who got it correct, but I see here it's ranking it by the time, the response time that they are taking, and that's, that's really right. really cool. Wow. Yes. Yes. Amazing. And you can also Amazing. you can even time your quizzes, so you can have a ten second quiz, a fifteen second quiz, so you can cause people to move quickly, like. Give them like only 10 seconds and they'll, oh, okay, okay, okay. And once it's on the screen, it doesn't take 10 seconds to read the question question, and then uh, choose your answer. All right. Yeah. All right. So fun. I'm, I'm fun stuff. I just realized that's kind of a fun feature. I might start using that feature actually. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Gamification is what it's all about, right? So, and, uh, Andreas, yep. congratulations, six seconds faster than Saeed. Um, and beating Saeed is usually always a 
big, <laughs> big accomplishment. So um, I'm, I'm kind of like evaluating this right now as we are going, right? And I can see a couple of things that okay. are that are better than what I'm doing right now with my trivia where the answers are coming in in the comments, for example. Um, it seems right. to be faster, right? Because as soon as the question is out there and people are voting on it, I can already see it in the browser. Whereas uh, on, on YouTube, there's a certain latency with the traffic going out, with the traffic coming back. So the, 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 the oh. round time, mm -hmm. it's about six, seven, eight seconds, right? From the time I ask the question until I see the results coming in. Mm -hmm. So it's much faster. However... Right. Yash has uncovered something that makes me lean towards, well, maybe I stay with what I've been doing, and that is the following. When we asked before, he Sorry, said, I'm already Sorry, on my phone. I'm on my phone already, right? So he's watching us on YouTube on his phone, and in that case, he cannot participate in the same way. So Yash, please continue adding your answers in the comments and I'll bring them up as we move along. Very cool, very cool. Before mm. we continue, um, let's very, very quickly answer a question from Said, the facilitator. Um, he is sure. curious sure. whether you are using also Mentimeter, whether you have some experience with Mentimeter. I have no experience with Mentimeter, aside from people telling me that Slido looks like Mentimeter. So if it looks like Mentimeter and it gives us similar features and functions, I yeah. honestly have never really tried Mentimeter, partially yeah. because I don't want to, honestly. <laughs> I love the guys at Slido. I've been around them since they were three people and an office. They have now since sold their company to WebEx. And I just, I just like working with Slido. It, maybe one day uh, I can get a quick, uh, you know, 10, 15 second, a 10, 15 minute session with Mentimeter. If it does what Slido does and then some, I'm interested. If it does what Slido does, uh, I'm not interested, honestly. I'm not interested because it's worked for 10 freaking years or oh, more than 10 years for me why would i want to change even if i didn't love the guys at slido i've been using it for 14 years right 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 <laughs> and this is an important point right that we have emotional yeah. attachments to some of the tools that we yeah. are using and some of these have nothing to do with the functionality or it's it's purely hey i know these people i like these people or i love the community that they built anything along that line, right? Mm -hmm. um, Said, I would take this now as a uh, call to action. Please come <laughs> on the zone one of these days and we are doing a episode that is purely about Mentimeter, just like we do today, Slido. And um, I yeah. think this yeah. comment is the right comment here. It's it. just a Coke That's or it. Pepsi That's question, it. right? Uh, as long okay. as they lead to the correct results, and that is to engage mm -hmm. the audience, to keep them paying attention and feeling involved and part of the happenings. Speaking of engagement, let's go to our next trivia question. And that question is... Okay. How does Slido help in managing a large number of questions during a Q&A session? I've been in online meetings where there are hundreds, if not thousands of participants, right? And so if everybody is asking questions, you know, how does Slido manage that? Is it A, with a feature called upvoting, B, by limiting the questions each person can ask by deleting some of the questions or simply ignoring them. So is it A, B, <laughs> C, or D? Yash, you are going to use the comments. Everybody else is um, using 
Slido. And here are the four choices again. And we see 100% 100% are going with A, upvoting, but D always helps as well, says Said. And Yash was guessing A as well. So upvoting. Yeah. Nathan, tell us a little bit about how that feature works, how you use it. Uh, it sounds like a fairly sure. useful kind of thing. It is indeed. We haven't even talked about one of the biggest uses of Slido that I love, and that is being able to take questions from your audience. And the coolest part about this is you can have 50 people in the audience or 5,000 people in the audience, and you don't need somebody to manage all the questions coming in. So if you can bring up the Q&A that's currently out there, Claudio, let's bring that up so people can see it. And they should be able to see, there's only one question there right now that came in from Scotty. And so we can't really upvote that question, but imagine that 75 questions have been asked and they're all, well, let me go back. Let's say 20 questions were asked. And when the next person that goes in there and sees a question that they want answered also, they just upvote it so that you don't have 75 people asking the same question. The key to making this successful in an audience is you need to give them some direction at the beginning. So it only takes a couple of minutes and I generally start out with something like this. So if the three of you in the, on the line right now can actually pick up your phone, let's go back to that screen for a moment. This is how I normally start. Ladies and gentlemen, I am so thrilled to be with you here today. I want to take all your questions. Now, I might not be able to answer all the questions today, but I want to get them all. Here's the simplest way. Scan this QR code. And now you can ask me any question you want. And please, somebody ask me a question right now so I know it's working. Oh, thank you. What, which special day is today? Okay, great. Now I know that's a question you want answered. I can answer that question and then click it and make it go away. Mm -hmm. Boom, now the next one floats up and the next one floats up and the last question asked is always at the bottom, but it gives your audience a way to stay engaged for the entire time because they see the questions coming in and they, oh, I want that answer. I want that, I want that, I want that. Mm -hmm. And then I always have at least three points in my deck that look like the slide you're looking at right now. So when I click, I say, let's take some questions, click. Boom, up on the screen come those questions, and I do what I just did. Let's take the most popular questions. What are your thoughts on using pictures or graphics versus text? I would answer that question, click it off, and keep moving. If I want to take three questions, I could take three questions. If I want to take 20 minutes of questions, I could take 20 minutes of questions. And that feature by itself is amazing. And I do want to mention something here, very important. I am not selling you Slido. I don't work for them and you don't need to pay them. You can use their product for free forever for three polls and all the live Q&A you ever want to do. So you can start using Slido right now. You won't be able to customize it and brand it and do all those fancy things, but you can see how it works. And then if you want to dive into it, you can go get a sub if you need it. But you should be able to experiment with it all the way through without getting a subscription. Now, one more thing I do, I, I, I always forget this, but this is one of the things I discovered a few years after Slido came out. When they allow you to set up your Slido interactions in the past, it used to be about a week that you could have it open. Now, why would you need it open for a week? Think about that. Let's say you want to have people ask you questions before the workshop or before the talk. You want to find out what's most interesting to them about your topic. You can actually do what we did here today, which was we had a multiple choice question out there available for everybody that came into the meeting or that registered or that looked at the calendar invitation or the email that Claudio sent out. And if you don't mind, Claudia, you want to bring that up now so I can show people what the results were? Because Slido lets you interact with your audience before, during, and after 
the event. So before the event, I wanted to know, what is your preferred video meeting platform? Now, obviously, we only have three people on the line right now, but look at how many people responded. 31 people responded. I know Claudio responded, and one of uh, I responded once. Okay, we'll take it down to number 29. But I got 29 people to tell me that Zoom, 60% of you want Zoom. So if I'm coming in to do a talk on butter, I know that I better realize that most of you are using Zoom and Teams, and I can use those numbers to help me in the way I interact with you. If you're podcasting and you want to know what do your audience want to hear about, open up your Slido before, ask them for input. And the next thing you know, you know what they want. Now you don't have to figure out what they want. And then after it's over, if you have questions that are not answered, I promise my audience, I will answer all the questions that, you ha that we haven't had time to answer here. I'll write my answers or I'll video the answers and send them to my organizer. And that way it's a finished job. I've got all the questions answered. And sometimes there's 10 or 12 questions that I haven't had time to answer and you run out of time. So there. Wow. Wow. <laughs> so uh, the, the, the thing that didn't surprise me about these results before was WebEx. Uh, WebEx didn't even get one mm. vote, right? And uh, it's so <laughs> funny because not too long ago, WebEx was pretty much the only thing that we had to have these yeah. online meetings, right? And right. it almost became a verb at one point, you know? And today, still exists, but people are just not using it all that much anymore. Very, very quickly, a detour, because I'm sure. wondering if you know, Nathan, um, the answer to Saeed's question, what special day is today? Don't look in the comments. <laughs> what? what special what day special is What special day? The answer yeah. is... The 14th. Uh, 3.1415 uh, Pi there Day. Yes, there how fun. Go. It's Pi Day. Now, okay. here, All right. here is a little bit extra info for those that are very geeky and enjoy this because I personally, I celebrate Pi Day every single year. And Said, here is a question yeah. for you. Did you know that Albert Einstein was born on this day, 314. Oh, and Stephen Hawking, no. <laughs> Stephen Hawking, he died on this day. He died on Pi Day, right? So yeah, a little bit Amazing. extra, extra Amazing. useless information, useless knowledge about Pi Day. So um, yeah, this is here's this is here's more knowledge. Here's good. more. Here's yeah. here's. here's Sorry. Yeah, go. Cool. I was going to say, here's more wasteful information. When I was about 15 years old, I, I memorized like nine of the numbers of pi. Let's see if I can call them back. 3.14159268. Okay. I don't know if that's right or not, but I did not read that. That's in my head. 3.14159268. Is that right? Don't know. It sounds pretty correct, at least like the first oh. five or so. I'm not sure, you yeah. know, how far it goes. Saeed um, should know. He, Saeed, Saeed probably knows 29 or 30 of them. <laughs> um, very good, very good. So yeah, that 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 stuck in your memory, yeah. Eight. Yeah. Shall we show them a few more things that Slido can do, like word clouds Ooh, and whatnot? Yeah. Look at that. 3.14159268. Yeah, 68. So that goes to the seven. Well six, done, eight. Andres. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. All right. Uh, very good. Very good. So let's bring up another trivia question here. And that is, oh, yeah, by the way, it is upvoting okay. here. We already saw that. And... What unique features does Slido offer for event organizers to gauge the success of their sessions? Is it A, location tracking, B, analytics, C, automatic video recording, or D, real-time translation? Again, location tracking, 
analytics, automatic video recording, or real-time translation. Let's take a look at the results that are coming in on Slido. And Yash says it's C, automatic video recording. And... It looks like nobody voted. That's okay. Well, the answer is analytics. B, yes, B. Andreas got it with B, but he didn't vote on Slido. Um, just guess. Okay. okay. Just guess. And so let's yeah. have a look briefly at the um, the analytics, right? So this is the interface. This is the back yes. end that people would see. Can you walk us through this a little bit? Oh, the voting was closed. Sure. When it comes somehow, to the analytics. Somehow the voting was closed. Oh, Maybe I did. there was I a timer it. on it because I saw after about 10 or 15 seconds. Uh, there was a check mark with the right answer, so maybe there was a timer on it. Um, it doesn't really matter. So yeah. let's look at the analytics. Um, what can you tell us about right. the analytics? How are you using them, Nathan? I use them for my clients, believe it or not. I don't mm -hmm. really care much about it because, you know, I get paid, honestly. I get paid for what I do. So the analytics help my client feel better about what the audience did. And when I give the client these results, they are floored to even have a PDF document that literally lets them go to management and say, hey, you know, we had 29 out of 63 slot people in the audience actually participate, blah, blah, blah. They answered questions. They were involved. Here's all the questions people asked. Here's all the results of the polls, the results of the word clouds. And it's kind of a very uh, complete analytics result of what happened during your session. So that's pretty much all I use it for. I give it to my clients. And I also will take in, and take all the questions that they put in a nice uh, spreadsheet for me. And I'll take those and start answering them in a video or in a written document that I send back to my client. So it makes it really easy for me to not have to go back into a chat window and find all the questions and things like they were all in one place. It really lowers my stress when it comes to getting my clients the data they want to wrap up and get paid. Yeah. Yeah. So yes. So, the answer was B analytics. <laughs> I'm lagging behind here. You know, this thing is totally throwing me off. <laughs> 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 All right. So well, maybe uh, uh, maybe in the future you can re mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's. Shall quickly... I just take people through a few of the other things that Slido does? Yes, yes, yes. And then I also want to hear your opinion, actually, to Scotty's uh, question. Um, your your answer. What what your take is on that? Oh. Um, whichever one you want to do first. Let's what let's go I through some more features. Okay, great. So there's a bunch of other things you can do with uh, with Slido, and one mm -hmm. of them is word clouds. Mm -hmm. So when you want people to have an organic, organic organic word cloud created in front of you, this is fun. You can ask people something like, how do you feel about presenting on, on a camera right now? Use an emoji or one word to describe it. So for those of you online right now with us, if you could just put a word in or an emoji in just so that we can see that it actually is working, it should. And then people start adding their emojis or their word like scared, scared, and scared gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, just like a normal word cloud would. And then at the end, by the way, people, I have seen people take out their video camera and start filming the word cloud being created in front of them. It's something most people have never really seen. So from a, an audience interaction point, they've really never, most that I've run into, have never seen a word cloud happen with the people in the room or online. Yeah, and as you okay. can see, the more and more stuff, right. So then at the end of the talk or the yeah. end of my workshop, I bring the same question up again and ask mm -hmm. them, how do you feel using what? And then the words and all change. Happy, excited, uh, smiles, love. I mean, it's, it's amazing to see how people feel without having to ask them to speak up. 
That's what yeah. Slido does better than anything is it lets your audience participate without raising their hands, without yeah. speaking, without yeah. anything. It just, it's, it's a beautiful thing. Look what's happening. And, and as you can see, I've let the Slido let you put in more than one answer. So that's your choice. When you're running your word cloud, you can say, I only want one answer from everybody, or I'll yeah. let people, as many as you want. And I always let people do as many as you want because you can see what's happening. Even with just four of us, we're starting to see a, a fun result here. The oh, next one go, I want to have you really go, go uh, back see very is quickly. A, uh, a ranking. Sorry. Sorry, Nathan. Go back. No. Go back very quickly. <laughs> right, because okay. I wanted to see that. Right. Okay. It's like somebody must have typed in nervous again. So now nervous is becoming bigger. Right. 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 Yeah. Exactly. Just just the same as any word cloud would communicate to you that the word nervous is the most popular word of everybody's response right now. All right. And just to make sure. And I can, I can see in, go ahead. Just to make go sure ahead. Yash isn't uh, left out here. That's his emoji right now. The cool, cool, cool sunglasses. Oh, Love whoa, it. whoa, whoa. We got nervous and we Love got, is, is that the scream, the scream uh, emoji? Yeah, okay. Creepy, creepy. All right, moving on to the next feature. Here's a, a, rank, a, a ranking uh, opportunity or a rating opportunity. Let's see, how do you feel right now? You just click on whatever one you feel and boom, everybody's starting to tell me as the presenter how they feel right now. It's a beautiful thing. As you see people start interacting with these things, you get a sense for what they're actually feeling. And if you ask, sometimes it's amazing the kinds of results you'll get. And with the few people that we have, okay, so you can see the results are starting to come in now. Usually when you have more than 50 or 100 people online, you can see in the top right corner how many people are responding to your 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 poll or your word cloud. So you wait a little bit, you see, and then you move on. You just turn it off and go to the next one. Mm -hmm. Here's a basic, uh, you know, rank them in the order you like using them if you wanted to. Uh, that's another one. And then the final one, I'm not going to let you all do it because we are running out of time here. The last one, which is open text. What's the number one takeaway from our session today? And I'm asking all of you, what is your number one takeaway? from our session here today in this episode. If you could just take a moment and just put it in there, that would be a great way to kind of final, get to the end of the features that Slido basically, polls, quizzes, rankings, surveys, word clouds, and live questions all in one yep. place. I learned yep. something, thank you. <laughs> yep. Yep. And see, these can all be anonymous too. That's the beauty of all the interactions can be anonymous or you can have put your name in. Now, most people would prefer not to put their name in, which is fine. So that's what I have to say. I, I know I probably have ranted a little bit much on Slido, but as you can tell, no. I am wildly enthusiastic about it for one simple reason. I get results from it. It's exactly. not BS. People exactly, exactly. And uh, you know, just to answer Scotty's question very, very briefly, uh, about, you know, graphics and images. To me, it's all about the visual presentation, representation. Mm. And that's why I'm running my trivia like this, right? Because it's just a totally different feeling, a different engagement that you're getting. But the beauty is you can combine those two together, right? I can have the front end with the question like this and then have the people to mm -hmm. actually go and vote. So this would be the last uh, trivia here. What can people do uh, besides participating? Can they order food, make phone calls, submit feedback, or play video games? And of course, the correct answer is submit feedback. So if you are still on the interface, please um, submit your feedback because this poll or this Slido page here is going to be open for another day or two. So please provide any additional feedback that you want on this interface. All right, all right. And uh, Yash got it, of course. It is yep. C and his takeaway as well is he learned 
about the cool tool today. Thank you so much, Nathan, for introducing Slido to us. You're welcome. It is a powerful, powerful tool. And as you said, you know, it's free in its basic version, three questions or three different poll types, plus all the Q&A you can muster. So really, really cool. Thanks to our live audience members and everybody who has uh, always watching this on replay. Remember to subscribe to this channel. We are doing this every single week. And with that, I wish you all a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are in the world. And we will see each other again next week. Bye-bye.